Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Trigger Point Yin. My name is Meg and I'll be leading you through your practice. Today we're going to be talking about uh, therapies around running. Um, I've had a lot of clients come to me recently with pain because of their running practice that might be stopping them from running at all or stopping them from running longer distances. And it doesn't matter if you're just running for fitness, running every once in a while, or training to run a marathon, there's a lot that you can do to take care of your body if you're trying to be a runner in any way. Because it's really hard on your body and there's a lot of tensions that develop um, and can cause a lot of pain. So the ones that I find to be the most prominent are pain in the hip joints, um, either caused by iliopsoas or quad tightness, uh, pain in the knees, runner's knee, caused by TFL tightness, glute medius weakness, tension in the outsides of the legs, um, pain in your calves or shin splints, so lower leg problems, tensions there, or plantar fasciitis, pain in your feet. And we're gonna go through all of those today, things that you can do before you run, things that you can do after you run, things that you can do while you run, just mindfulness practice, posture to be aware of while you're running, to make sure that you're not exacerbating any of these problems. Um, so we'll go through each of those things. It's not going to be a super therapeutic session if you're gonna sit down to stretch and trigger point before you run. Um, because anytime you are laying on a lacrosse ball, getting that deep tissue massage sensation, it's not going to support your athletic endeavor right away. Right? It's going to um, actually hinder your athletic ability in the short term while it's doing long-term healing. So all of my pre-run things that I'm going to go through, it's just going to be a minute per side or a minute per stretch, a minute through per trigger point exercise. Um, so this isn't going to be a very long stretching therapy session for you that I'm suggesting. So we're going to get into first postural mindfulness, and then we'll go from there. All right, posture to think about while you're actually running. Um, first of all, keeping your chest lifted, your shoulders down and back, and your shoulders generally over your hips, right? So you're not leaning forward, you're not leaning back, but you're uh, erect. With your, with your posture, just like you would when you're trying to stand up straight, sit up straight, thinking about that same posture while you're running. And uh, keeping the shoulders down out of your ears and the shoulders back will help uh, your chest expansion as you breathe and help you to breathe more fully. The other thing that, that does uh, allowing you to breathe more is if you tend to get cramps around your lower ribs, um, it'll allow you to really breathe into that space and help loosen up those muscles while you're running and help those cramps go away. And another thing about those sorts of, of cramps, belly cramps, um, while I'm on the topic is exaggerate some movement while you're running, right? It's not going to help your forward momentum. It's not efficient running movement, but you get those um, diaphragm cramps, tension in your abs, if that all starts to lock down, exaggerate your breath, breathe into your lowest set of ribs, and then twist while you run. Get some movement in the rib cage, some movement in the spine as you're running, and that can help to loosen all of that up. Um, that was my aside on the upper body. And then with the lower body, it can be really easy if you have tight quads and are tight on the front line of your body to take marching steps to move forward. And that, uh, first of all, is not a super efficient way to run. Um, but second of all, it's just exacerbating quad hip flexor tightness. So making sure that your knee goes behind midline with every step. And while you're walking or running, making sure that you're doing that with both legs, you can do it really exaggerated. You know, you don't have to 
take a lunge every time you take a step, but doing it for a couple of steps and seeing how it feels and trying, trying to loosen that up as you run, as you move, because you're gonna be warm at that point. And using that to your advantage, using, you know, if you take it slow at the beginning of your run and do some rotation and do some exaggerated uh, thigh quad extension, moving it back, um, it can help limber up your body so it doesn't lock down later on in your run. Now we'll go over four of what I think are the main problem areas that affect people when running. And I'm going to start with runner's knee. Uh, runner's knee is pain in the knees when you're running. Um, and it is caused by tightness in the TFL, tensor fascia latte, glute medius, glute medius weakness, and all of that tension in the outer hips translates down the outside of the leg uh, and pulls into the knees causing that pain. Um, so we're gonna do a little bit of trigger point first. And what you'll need is a lacrosse ball and probably a bolster or just something to support um, one knee on. If you want something to rest underneath your head to make yourself more comfortable, that's also an option. So to get into the TFL, um, you're looking for your hip bone, your ascus, your anterior superior iliac spine, and then placing the lacrosse ball just to the side of that. So uh, if you, again, you find that hip bone, move just off of it, maybe a, a quarter of an inch down, um, that is where you're gonna want the lacrosse ball. So we're gonna get one point there, and then we're gonna move the lacrosse ball straight back into the glute medius. So uh, I've just rolled that lacrosse ball past the midline of my hip onto the back line into those upper glutes. So we'll get into those two points with the lacrosse ball. I like to have something to put my top knee on for stability. So you'll lay down, find that first point, hold the lacrosse ball there, roll onto your side. And then, like I said, I like to put my knee my top knee on something. And then you'll hang out for maybe a minute here. You can straighten that bottom leg to get a little bit more sensation there, but this is not a deep therapeutic session. You're trying to get some softness in that muscle, some relaxation, um, and, and then that's it. So you can make sure that you are taking slow, deep breaths, allowing your body to relax, not tensing against the sensation. And then after you've hung out here for a minute, felt some amount of release, you can roll that lacrosse ball in the same plane onto the back line of the body and then just flop one or both knees over in the direction of the lacrosse ball. So lacrosse ball is here in my upper glutes, one or maybe both knees over in that direction. Same thing, staying for maybe a minute, breathing into it, letting it relax, letting your body get heavy. And really the whole sequence, you can spend five, maximum 10 minutes before you go out for a run. 10 minutes is probably even gonna be long. Um, so it's not taking up a ton of time. It's not uh, you know, gonna cut into your run time that much. Um, but if you are experiencing runner's knee, it should help uh, to help, help your running experience. All right, when you're ready to come off of that, you can roll your knees back up, and then you would just do the other side. And once you've finished uh, working with both sides of TFL and glute medius trigger point, uh, you'll take two different stretches. There's gonna be a cross-legged forward fold and then a quad stretch against the wall. For the cross-legged forward fold, it is exactly what it sounds like. You're going to stand up, 
and cross one leg in front of the other, bringing your pinky toes as close together as possible. And then feel your sit bones lift up, lengthening the back of the leg, and finally drop your head as much as you can. You can always have your hands on blocks or resting on a stool or something else in front of you if your hands don't come all the way to the ground. And you'll feel that stretch up the outside of your leg, uh, up into the outside of your hip. You can hold this 30 seconds to a minute and then take the other side. Make sure that you're putting more weight into the leg that is behind. So whatever the back leg is, uh, that one will have a little more weight in it. Try and relax your jaw and your head and your shoulders, allowing that weight to help you fold over your legs. And once you're finished with that, you can uncross your legs and we'll get into that quad stretch. You'll just need a wall. I also like to have a blanket, something to support my knee, because uh, it can be kind of painful to have it on a hard floor. So starting with my left side, I'm gonna back that knee up against the wall, toes point towards the ceiling, hands underneath the shoulders. This might be where you stay. If that is enough stretch for you, hang out there. If you need more stretch, Step the other foot forward. Another good stopping point, knee over the ankle. Maybe forearms up onto your thigh. Maybe pressing yourself upright. And things to pay attention to here, make sure you're not dumping into your lower back. If you have a really tight quad, your hip is going to get that anterior tilt in it. So getting some lower belly engagement to lift the pubic bone, press the tailbone down, and only then lunge forward, engaging that stretch in the front of your thigh. So if I was doing this for a more therapeutic session, uh, because it is such an intense stretch, I still would only hold it for about a minute, and then I would switch to the other side for a minute, and I would do that three times through, so you end up doing three minutes per side but pre-run one minute per side is plenty. When you're in the quad stretch or when you're setting up for the quad stretch, make sure that the leg that you're working on, that the knee is as close to midline as you can get it. So that knee isn't sprawled out to the side, um, it's more towards midline and that will help stretch into rectus femoris and vastus lateralis the two quad muscles that are probably going to be more tight uh, and more causing more tension when you run. Um, so having that alignment will help get into those outer quad, mid and outer quad muscles. And for stability, you can toe heel the front foot forward more, but keep the hips centered over that back knee. Or if you're still feeling unstable, put something next to you to put your hands on, not relying on that back leg to create a wider base or more stability. When you're ready to come out of it, hands back down to the mat. Step the foot back if you have stepped it forward and you can go right in to the other side. Knee against the wall, toe points up. Step the foot forward if you're going for that variation. Walking both forearms up, maybe hands come up, and then checking in with your pelvis, making sure the tailbone points down lift in the pubic bone, a little engagement in the lower abs. When you're ready to come out of it, again, walk the hands down, step your knee back, come off the wall and you can shake out your legs however is intuitive for you. And then the last thing in this sequence that um, it'll help with both quad tension, can help with knee tension because part of that knee tension can be glute medius weakness, um, activating the glutes. 
telling your glutes before you run to turn on so that you're driving with your ass uh, rather than just marching with your quads. So you can come into lying down, <laughs> come into lying down, plant your feet on the ground like you're setting up for bridge pose, a bit of a better angle, arms by your sides, and then before you even press into your feet, pull your pubic bone towards your ribs. It's a little tuck of the pelvis. Press into the backs of your arms at that point and get just a little lift in your hips. And then squeeze your butt, lift your hips up using that back line. So intentionally using the back line of the body to pick the hips up. Then a little engagement of the inner thighs towards each other. You're not pressing them together, but uh, you do feel both the knees pointing forward. They're not splaying out to the sides. Toes are pointing forward. And then you can lift one leg. And if you want to get a little bit of a pulse going, squeezing the glutes every time you press up. You can take this for 30 seconds on each side. Squeezing every time you press up. And then foot comes down and you can switch sides. Again, little pulses, squeezing every time. I sometimes put my hands on my butt to make sure that I am engaging there. And then bringing your foot back down, rolling your spine back down to the mat. And once your butt comes down, you can just do a little supine twist. Next, I want to talk about the calves and the shins and, um, and the feet. I'm going to do all of that together because I find that the whole lower leg is all connected. If you're having tension in your feet, it's probably drawing tension up into your calves. Um, and it's easier for me to just do it all together. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, you're going to need actually two lacrosse balls um, to work into the calves. You're going to need a bolster or something to rest your arms on. And uh, I think that that's really it. Um, so we're gonna start by stretching into the feet with a pose called fire toes pose. And if you're a yogi, uh, you're probably familiar with this and um, it's simple enough to get into. You're gonna tuck your toes under, walk your knees back so that you have a really good tuck of the toes and then you'll move the last two toes away from the rest. And you're spreading the toes just to get um, more stretch, really, trying to get a stretch all the way through all of those digits. Uh, and it seems like a silly adjustment, but when you do it, you'll, you'll notice. Then you can rest your hands down on your legs. You can practice keeping that nice erect posture so you're not sticking your tailbone out behind you, you're keeping your spine neutral. And you can get a little rock back and forth, moving the stretch all the way from one pinky toe to the other. And if you're feeling a burning sensation in the bottoms of your feet, fire toes pose, you're doing it right. Um, and your toes aren't gonna fly off your body. It's not gonna cause damage. It's the fascia in the bottom of your feet stretching. Um, so that burning sensation is just that, that connective tissue stretching. And it can be pretty intense, so breathe with it Stay with it. You can really slow down your breath here. Maybe close your eyes. Make sure that you're relaxing your shoulders, relaxing your neck. You can hold this for about a minute. And when you are finished, walk your hands back onto the mat. And then roll out your ankles, wiggle your toes as a release. And we're gonna stretch in the other direction. So you're gonna need your bolster for this one or some sort of rolled up blanket. And you'll place just your toes on that bolster. Knees are together, feet are as together as possible. And then sit back on your heels. So the more of your foot 
is on the bolster, the less stretch you're gonna get because the more your foot is gonna be supported. If you just have your toes on it, then your ankles are going to um, be stretched more. So again, sitting up straight, if you need more than this, you can walk your hands back. You can walk your hands back onto the ground. If that feels good, you can also just lean your weight back more. And then you can notice if the stretch is more in the tops of your feet, in your ankles, or if it's moving all the way up your shins. Trying to breathe all around the rib cage, in between the ribs, down into the lowest set of ribs. And again, after a minute, you can release, roll out your ankles, get some movement there. And then we'll get into the calves. I'm gonna grab a second cross ball. And then I like to set up a bolster out in front of me um, just in case I want the support. So you're gonna stick those lacrosse balls right behind your knees, right in the middle. So not out to one side or the other, just right in the middle, tucked up right behind the knees. And then you can sit back if you can tolerate that sensation. If not, you can start by having your forearms on the ground or on a bolster, or you can fully child's pose over a bolster and hang out here until you can add some more pressure. So we're gonna get uh, two different spots in the calves. This first one uh, is higher up in the calves, more in the meat of the muscle, the thicker part of the muscle. And this trigger point in particular, I find to start off so intense, almost intolerably intense, but the sensation dissipates really quickly to the point where I can then sit back on those lacrosse balls with most of my weight and it's not really a problem. And you're going through the gastroc, so the bigger, or not the bigger, but the show muscle, the more outer muscle of the calf. And then you're really trying to get into the soleus, that's the deeper muscle, um, the more workhorse muscle of the calf. So you can stay here for a minute. And then you're going to move those lacrosse balls down to where the calf starts to get slender. And so in the, in the base of the calf or the top of the Achilles tendon, um, that's where you're gonna want the lacrosse balls next. And that's where uh, the calf muscles come together and start to become that uh, cartilage and tendon. So again, you can sit back if you need something underneath your hands to support, go ahead and get it. <sighs> Sensation probably will start out intense, but it gets tolerable pretty quickly. Make sure that you're not straining in the front of your throat or in your chest. If you need to let your head hang, you can. And then when you're ready to come out of that, you can take those cross balls, lacrosse balls out, set them aside. Then I like to come onto all fours, extend one leg at a time, press the heel back. So stretching that calf, it's just the classic high school runner stretch, pressing the heel back one at a time. And then another stretch that you can do to get more into the soleus and get that gastrox muscle out of the way is a pointed toe forward fold. So pointing your toes forward, walking your sit bones onto the mat, 
And then Paschimottanasana, seated forward fold, folding as far forward as you can. And you can prop also. If your calves are really tight or your hamstrings are really tight, it can be nice to have something in front of you to hold on to and still pull yourself forward a little bit. We're pointing the toes um, as opposed to flexing them back, you'll just get into different muscles. And in all forward folding, your legs don't have to be locked out. Especially if you're really tight along your back line, uh, you're still going to get a stretch, even if your knees are bent. When you're ready to come out of it, just sit back up and then you can roll out your ankles, wiggle your feet around. And then you'll need just one lacrosse ball. I like to have my bolster. We're going to get into... Uh, tibialis anterior and peroneals. Um, so more of the muscles that can cause shin splints or, or pain along the front line of the calf. So uh, peroneals side of the calf, tibialis anterior front of the calf. Um, and we're going to start more on the side here. And we're really just going to roll that lacrosse ball around this broader area. So if you think maybe two fingers below the knee to I don't know, a hand and a half below the knee. So this whole area, um, we're gonna roll around and then wherever you feel a lot of sensation, if there's a place that twinges or lights you up in some way, you can stay there. So coming onto your side, I'm gonna demo my right side. Take that lacrosse ball about two fingers below the knee. The knee is bent here. And this might be enough pressure for you I like to cross my other calf on top of my knee to create more pressure. And then I roll that whole situation around. Give myself a little bit more space. Oh yeah. Until you find something that has a lot of sensation or sends radiating sensation down into the ankle or into the top of the foot, maybe into the knee um, or whatever your pain pattern is, right? When you find a spot that lights that up, stay there, pause, breathe with it, let it dissipate, give yourself a minute. And then you can move on looking for anything else in there that creates a similar pain pattern to whatever you're experiencing while you're running or post run. Work with that for another little bit, another 30 seconds to a minute. And then when you're finished or when you're ready, you can come off of that and take the other side. And then finally, uh, rolling out the bottoms of your feet. If you're having a lot of foot pain, a lot of tenderness there when you're running, um, getting a lacrosse ball or a golf ball and getting into the bottoms of your feet uh, for a little bit before you run is a good idea. So um, placing a lacrosse ball on the ball on the ground and you can be sitting in a chair, you can be standing. Um, I typically am standing, but for, for this video, I'll be sitting. Uh, so you can start rolling right below the ball mound of the big toe all the way down to the heel, rolling back and forth. And the advantage of sitting is you can stack your other foot on top if you need more pressure really roll that foot out.
and then do the midline below the second two toes all the way to the heel. And then the pinky toe all the way to the heel. And if anywhere in there you feel a lot of sensation or something crunchy that you want to work with, stay there. Put some more pressure on it. You can rock back and forth on a place that you feel uh, a lot of tenderness. Work it out. And then switch to the other side. And it should be a pretty intuitive process with your feet. Um, don't roll on your bone, that's gonna hurt. Um, don't bruise your bone. Anything that's crunchy can be worked out. It's an adhesion or a knot or something that's locked up in your foot. So uh, you can work that out, but right before your run isn't really the time to do that. If you have time, if you still have stamina after your run to get into more therapy, do it after you run. Do that work after you run. And like I have said uh, before in this video, um, you're not being super therapeutic here, right? You're getting blood flow in the area, you're working out places that are really tight, um, and that's it. So that it is just a stretch and a warm up to help not fall into those tension patterns while you're running. And then the real therapy can be done post run or on a day off. All right, and then when you're done, that's it. Maybe wiggle your toes around, roll out your ankles, get a little bit of movement, and then you're ready to go. So you've warmed up, you've done whatever stretching and trigger pointing that you need to do uh, to work with whatever is bothering you. Uh, you go for your run, you come back, and if you still have energy in your tank, then is the good time to really get into some therapy. You're warmed up, uh, your muscles are hot, um, drink a bunch of water, and then go after your quad again, roll out your quad. Um, you know, get back into the TFL if it was bothering you. Do a deeper therapy session if you have the time or wait for a day off to do it. Um, but another thing about cooling down if you don't have time to do therapy post run, just cool down in a way that you uh, want your body to be at rest, right? So if you go on a run and then immediately sit down in your car and drive home, your body is cooling down in a seated position with shortened quads, with lengthened but tight glutes, with shoulder forward posture driving, uh, holding your steering wheel. So stand for a little bit as you cool down. Walk around, cool down standing at home if you go home, or at least lay down flat <laughs> so that you're in an anatomical position and you're not cooling down, reinforcing um, tightness patterns that you're trying to get away from. So I hope that that was helpful. I hope that that helps your running practice, allows you to run uh, as much as you want and makes you feel good doing so. Um, and until next time, I hope you can let something go.